Hello everyone, my name is Katerina Semenyuk. Together with Oksana Dovgopolova, we are curators of the Culture Memory Platform Past Future Art. In the Center for Contemporary Art Plasnia, in partnership with Ukrainian Institute, we present the Trees of Memory Roots and Runners exhibition. The project is dedicated to the tradition of Babin Yar, one of the places of the Holocaust by bullets in Ukraine. In the frame of the project, both the exhibition and public program, we would like to discuss the contemporary instruments of commemoration. In our search for the appropriate instruments of working through the tragic past, we offered Olga Kiselova to collaborate with us and through the instrumentality of science to listen to the voices of the Bab and Yard trees. We are kindly inviting you to tour the history of the place with us as well as to view the exhibition in more detail. When thinking about the memory of tragic events, we understand how difficult it is to find an appropriate language to talk about the unspeakable. Should we try to reproduce the event uh, how it was to enable people to experience their real feelings? But the artist or curator usually does not have the knowledge um, of the person who has this traumatic experience. We, as uh, curators of the Past Future Art Memory Culture Platform, have been thinking uh, about this for several years now. Artists and theorists uh, have been thinking about this for decades after the Second World War. We are not pioneers in this field, but we uh, tried to find our approaches to the practices of working through the tragic past. We have looked closely at Olga Kisilova's artistic practices. She has never consciously worked with the topic of memory, but uh, has worked with uh, plants and art and science tools for many years. We have paid attention to her project dedicated to the elm tree uh, in the French city of Biscaras. This elm tree witnessed the city's history for several years, uh, for several centuries, I'm sorry, and um, had a symbolic meaning. It died in 2010 through climatic changes. Local people wanted to save the memory of the elm. They imagined something uh, from uh, the remnants of the tree, but the artist went another way. Using the DNA of the dead tree, she, with her colleagues, created a new plant, resistant to the climatic challenges. A new tree has grown at the place of the old one. The memory of centuries is present here but lives in a new body. This is a very important uh, message for us. It is impossible to reproduce the past exactly how it was, how it happened. But it, uh, this does not mean that it has gone. A new living creature carries memory in itself. This is, an, uh, this is important, not a monument made of metal but a living creature. It is impossible to reconstruct the past, but memory can become a part of a new life. Olga Kisilova has been participated in the Eden project for many years now. It is an art and science, um, art and science project, which has a complex and multi-layered goal to treat the plant as a collocutor, to heal the wounds inflicted uh, by the um, civilization to plant world, and to restore the uh, extinct uh, species. With the help of uh, special technical means, the Eden uh, project team began uh, listening to the voices of trees by reading electromagnetic impulses inside their trunks. We felt that this is an appropriate language consonant with our searches. 
Olga Kisilova agreed to cooperate with us on working with the memory of the Babin Yar tragedy. We are now at the site when one of the most terrible events in the history of Europe took place. In the last day of September 1941, here in the ravine Babin Yar, the Nazis shot more than 33,000 Kiev Jews. This was a part of the so-called Holocaust by bullets or the Holocaust before Auschwitz. All over the world, the word Holocaust evokes the image of Auschwitz, a death enterprise that was created by the Nazis on the territory of Poland. But in 1941, hundreds of thousands of Jews, Roma and mentally disabled people were shot dead near their homes in Eastern Europe. Describing this, the French priest Patrick Dubois introduces the term Holocaust by bullets. During 1941-43, not only the acts of the Holocaust had been committed here, the prisoners of war, the enemies of the Nazi regime, found their deaths here. The executions continued here until the liberation of Kyiv in 1943. In times of war, Babin Yar was a place without trees. They covered the ravine later. With the end of the Second World War, another story of Babin Yar began. The so-called period of organized forgetting. The policy of uh, hidden anti-Semitism uh, started after 1948 in USSR, allowed no commemoration of uh, Jewish tragedies. The meetings in Babin Yar, Soviet powers qualified as illegal. The creation of monument uh, had been frozen for decades. Everybody who told about acts of uh, mass murder of Jews was accused of so-called cosmopolitanism, uh, so absence of uh, patriotism. The reason uh, for um, this prohibition was we don't need to separate certain nationalities from the common tragedy of Soviet people. In the uh, 1950s, the Soviet powers created the industrial waste dump in Babin Yar. In 1961, the tragic accident occurred here when the mud flow from the dump in Babin Yar destroyed the Kurinivka village, uh, taking away the leaves of more than a thousand people. The public conscience interpreted this accident as the revenge of the victims who stayed in oblivion. Uh, people gathered in Babin Yar again and again demanding the monument. Only in 1976, the monument appeared at, least, at last. In the meantime, trees were rising over the Babin Yar. They remained the silent gods of memory. Their roots, underground, literally touched the past. After the Kurinivka tragedy, the landscape of Babin Yar changed so much that no one could say for sure where the human remnants are now. Only trees know. The trees quietly and carefully covered the site of the tragedy, as if we were uh, healing the wound. When we talk about trees at the sites of tragedies, the metaphor of poisoned landscapes by Martin Pollock come to mind. Pollock is Austrian non-fiction writer. He describes the sites of massacres that over decades have become covered with trees and concludes that murderers become gardeners. By planting trees, they try to hide the scenes of their crimes. We don't expect that the beautiful landscape we are admiring is hiding something terrible. The moment we recognize that, the landscape becomes poisoned forever. A person can never get rid of this knowledge. The trees of Babin Yar were not planted by the killers. They gradually covered up the crime scene. They witnessed the human tears and quarrels, 
the attempts of people to protect the memory of the victims, the appearance of numerous small monuments in the days of independent Ukraine. These trees were becoming monuments in themselves. We see these trees as nature's attempt to heal the wound caused by humans. We would like to reload the metaphor of poisoned landscapes. Trees are living creatures that are most different from us. We would like to hear their voice. What could they tell you about? When we came to Babin Yar and looked at the trees growing there, we thought that the tree is a capsule of memory and an ideal metaphor for the connection between the past, present and future. Grounds feed them and the liquids rise up in the trunk. That is, the metaphor of the past will move upwards to young branches and leaves. This movement takes place continuously. Roots tell branches about the past, give strength to feel the life and build the future. Human ways uh, of talking about the tragic past are imperfect. They often provoke new conflicts and memory wars. Trees, as living monuments, give us the image of careful, silent remembrance, not hushing up, because the story about the past continues constantly, but speaking in another language. For us, this is a metaphor for the need to find a new language for commemorating tragic events. It is a metaphor of solidarity of all li uh, living things. Then, um, through a specific living creature, we talk about the value and dignity of a uh, living being. Each tree has its own voice. It is individual. We thought about how we could hear the voices of the trees. Of course, these voices are a metaphor, but a metaphor that explains a lot about ourselves. Therefore, we invited Olga Kisilova to visualize these voices. With the help of special equipment, the artist and her colleagues from Sorbonne University and the French National Center for Scientific Research recorded the movement of electromagnetic impulses inside the trunk. The uh, unique pattern of this movement is for us a metaphor for the voice of the tree. These voices have been visualized. You can sit inside the exposition and listen to the tree's voices by looking at the movement of multicolored cycles that change each other uh, on the screen. And on the other screen, to see the tree's portrait, to imagine how its leaves rustle, uh, what it has witnessed, and what wounds of the past its roots cover. There are four videos uh, in the exposition. The artist shows portraits and voices of two trees from the Babin Yar. You are invited to listen the voices till September 30.